So hello and welcome to another video. So in this video, I'm gonna be doing my review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Now, at the time of recording this, it's about it's been about a month since I've owned this device. So yeah, I wanna give my thoughts and mainly I wanna talk about the gaming part of this phone as one, uh, my channel is around gaming and I wanna keep it that way. So this is gonna be a gaming focus review and two, I want to give my concerns and talk about the state of mobile gaming on 20 in 2023. So yeah, um, let's get into it. I have a list right here of things I want to say and things I want to talk about. But yeah, um, I do want to first give my overall general thoughts of the phone first, um, as it kind of hopefully it will set up my overall thoughts of the phone as a whole. So yeah, let's get into it. So first, let's talk about what I like about this phone. So first of all, the phone feels a lot lighter than I anticipated. I mean, this thing is relatively, um, it's not like the lightest phone in the world, but it's definitely lighter than uh, any previous like Pro Maxes. Like my mom has a 12 Pro Max and it felt quite a bit heavier than this phone. Um, it's not like significant, but it's there. So it's nice to hold in the hands and I can still one hand this for the most part. Uh, next up, the action button here. Uh, that was another feature. I love this thing. Um, being able to just like you know make a shortcut and basically make a second control center for all my things so, like toggle work rewards apps cameras um let me see if i can do it again uh quickie so stuff like um setting my timer setting an alarm toggle mute stuff like that this action button is a game changer for me and my workflow so really happy that that's in here um also next up and speaking of the action button the cameras are great love these things basically the reason why i adore the camera so much is because most of my content on this channel the irl stuff use um, an iphone camera so i don't have to use the iphone 12 camera anymore this is significantly improved compared to the old iphone 12 so yeah i'm definitely going to be using these cameras way more for future youtube content and potential videos so yeah hopefully you guys enjoy that in the future so yeah Next up, I want to talk about the USB-C port. I think this is the next obvious addition. Now, the USB-C port is there for obvious reasons. Thank you, EU, by the way. <clears throat> Being able to just use one cable for everything here, and not just that, uh, the expansive list of accessories that you could use, and you can use, like, you know, SSDs, uh, docks, and stuff like that. But most importantly, especially for gaming, wired USB-C controllers. Now, like say that you had an Xbox or PS5 controller and it ran out of battery and you need something real quick. Instead of, uh, you know, separately charging it, you can just plug this directly in uh, to the iPhone and it should still work technically. I mean, the possibilities here are endless, but it's definitely really nice for those uh, gaming purposes that ha rely on a USB-C port. So, yeah. Thanks to you for bringing that back again. So, yeah. Anyways. Also, the speakers in this phone are great, especially for listening to music and gaming. It's great. So that's a lot of the things that are good about this phone, um, or most of the stuff that I want to say that I love about this phone. Now I want to talk about the ifs, the s, and the um, kind of the negatives. So first of all, not a big fan of the dynamic island here. I know why it's there, but it being there just, I, I, I'm not a really big fan of it. The problem with it is that, especially when you're playing video games or apps, if you're doing them sideways, uh, sometimes the UI will block the um, the UI will be blocked behind the pill if it's not uh, if it's not oriented or optimized properly, and you can't edit the the screen bounds. So yeah, in some games you can barely see what you can not even barely you can you can't see what's going on behind the pill, and that becomes a problem in some apps. So yeah. Not a big fan of it. Wish there was just nothing there or just like a small hole cut out like Android phones are, but it's whatever. It's not the end of the world. Next up, the 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, this was something that I was excited for as I'm a big advocate on 120 hertz, but the major problem with 120 hertz on the iPhone is that the adaptive refresh rate isn't as consistent as I thought it would be like compared to the iPad. I don't know what it is, but sometimes in the software, the at the adaptive refresh rate sometimes lags behind so like say that i swipe here oh i want to go to my notification center there's a little bit of lag there as you can see there it was very strange why it does that i feel like it's a software optimization issue but the 120 hertz refresh rate doesn't feel that great on this phone just because of how inconsistent the adaptive refresh rate changes and lags 
and it kind of makes it a little bit unpleasant. I wish they hopefully they address it because this is hopefully if they address it, this will probably be a pro. And obviously, like 120 hertz is the standard for a lot of Android phones. So yeah, they need to address that. So even though I love the 120 hertz refresh rate, it's that problem that's making me put this as a con at the moment until they fix it. So yeah. And then finally, the price. 1200 bucks is expensive. And there's no, you know, going around around it. I mean, this is a flagship phone with big boy specs. So yeah, I mean, 1200 bucks is not cheap. I mean, look at the S23 Ultra too, like 1200 bucks starting. It's crazy to think about how expensive phones are. So it's going to be hitting a dent in your pocket, especially if you plan to use this as a gaming phone. So yeah, I just want to keep that in mind. But overall, I'm really liking this phone for what it is as a general workhouse computer. On the topic of gaming, let's get into the part where you guys are most interested in and the one that I'm mainly going to be talking about in this video, the gaming. So I have a couple of games here. Let me first plug this in real quick. Um, I do have my screen capture here on my Mac. All right, so here we are recording. Now, I'm going to show you guys a couple of games here. Um, let's first start with Angry Birds here. I mean, I want to start off with one of the classics. All right, uh, it's a little bit wonky right now. The I have my audio po pulling out of my Mac right now So as I'm recording this. So, yeah, I mean, Angry Birds, you know, is Angry Birds. I don't need to kind of go in depth here. If you're if you're buying... Oh, let me, let me go to a different level. This one is giving me a lot of trouble, but um, let's just do this one right here. But my point is that if you're buying a $1,200 phone to play Angry Birds, you need to reconsider it. Because <laughs> there's no way that it, this game can't run on something like a iPhone SE or even like an Android phone for like less than 500 bucks. I mean, let's be honest here. If you're playing games like these, don't bother with a pro. And if that's your focus, yeah, don't bother with a pro. Oh my god, am I actually going to fail this? I actually failed that. Okay, let me try that one more time. There we go. Holy moly, that took a while. But yeah, I mean, that's basically gaming on, like, casual iPhone gaming on this thing. It's whatever. Obviously, if you're going to be buying this phone, you probably won't buy this just to play, like, Candy Crush, unless you really are a, a first world uh, rich person who has the money to afford it. But yeah. All right, so next up on my list here, uh, let me see here. I got, let's take a look, uh, not there. Um, let's do something a little bit more intensive here. So let's go to say, let's say Minecraft here. All right. So yeah, I mean, this is Minecraft. Uh, this is a little bit more intensive, but it's not some, a game that you can't play on a um, less intensive device. So you can see here, uh, I have a couple things here. Let me go ahead and uh, get some more wood here. A little bit tricky to record and uh, play this at the same time, I will say that. Oh boy. Come on, sheep, get back here. There you go. All right, so let's go ahead and just, you know, let's cook around. I mean, this game runs perfectly fine on this device. Uh, nothing wrong about it. I mean, Minecraft is an endless uh, game that you can just spend hours into. Um, though I don't know if I would spend it playing on a, an iPhone per se. Um, or especially when a uh, touch controls, um, but you know, it's there if you need to. And if you don't have anything else, this could be pretty comparable. So yeah, um, you guys see Minecraft before, so I won't go too much in depth on it. I mean, it runs really smoothly on this pretty obvious, which is pretty obvious. Uh, I don't need to explain more, but yeah. Anyways, let's move on to a different game here. All right, next up, let's do a little bit more intensive here. So <clears throat> let's go into something like, uh, let's say Car X Street. Now, Car X Street is a pretty interesting game. I'm um, actually something that I've uh, never played before. It's actually a, a way more intensive than I thought it was going to be. This is like one of the more intensive uh, mobile games. Uh, plays almost like a Need for Speed Forza S type of game. Pretty interesting, honestly. All right, so we're in the game right now. Uh, let's just go to the city here. As you can see here, uh, let's. I'm going to show you guys the graphic settings real quick. Hold up. So if you go into the settings here, uh, graphics over here, um, setting it to the max. Let me go ahead and set this uh, this resolution up here. Why is my resolution so low? I'm going to set it to five. Um, but yeah, anyways. So we're playing here at basically almost native res. I, and basically plays like almost like a, a Need for Speed, uh, Forza Horizon type of deal. 
plays pretty well. I mean, very smooth gameplay wise. Um, and these types of games are games that I live for. Um, there's just a one little problem with a bunch of them, and I'll get into that as I continue on. Oh, it's lagging a little bit there as it's trying to load in, yeah, um, some of the stuff. So, oh my god. Alright, so yeah, we're just going to be driving around the city for a little bit. But, yeah, as you can see here, it's relatively smooth. I mean, um, it's obviously going to be a little bit better if you lower down the graphics a little bit. And honestly, like for a screen this small, I think you should be okay with lowering the graphics down. I mean, this is a mobile phone. I'm not expecting the world out of this thing. So, yeah. Um, the uh, 8 gigabytes of RAM, though. The This thing has, outside of the, the um, insane, really good um, GPU and CPU that this thing has, um, it's the fact that this uh, phone has 8 gigs of RAM compared to, like, less on earlier phones which makes oh my god do not oh my god anyways um it's the eight gigs of ram that makes this run relatively smooth especially when you're multitasking and have some other things in the background so yeah uh, i'm just gonna play this a little bit oh my god i need to remember to break and stuff so yeah all right can you going on here you can see here oh did i hit into a tree oh the tree hit yeah, traction, whatever. <laughs> I'm just demoing this right now, but yeah. Anyways. Alright, just gonna continue driving around. Yeah, I mean, this game runs relatively fine. Um, the get, I will say the phone does get a little bit toasty. Um, that is one thing. Even with all the updates that Apple has to address, I mean, gaming is gonna make this phone a little toasty, especially since this thing relies on passive cooling instead of, um, what is it? Instead of, um active cooling or something like a vapor chamber system like the samsung phones are so yeah this phone is going to get a little bit toasty when playing so that's a little bit of a con right there that i actually never mentioned especially when you're gaming it's going to be a little bit of a problem your hands are not going to be comfortable after longer gaming sessions so yeah all right um let's go ahead and just go on to the next game i guess you can see here um this is car x street um really good game recommend it but yeah let's get into the next game Alright, so Warzone Mobile is unfortunately not working for me right now, and so because of that, we're just going to be playing the next most intensive game that I have on this phone, which is Genshin Impact. Uh, I wish Warzone Mobile worked. I do have some gameplay of it, so I will be showing it later on in the video, but Warzone Mobile has a bunch of connection issues that I have right now, so kind of unfortunate that I can't show it to you guys in live, but yeah, it's really good. It's honestly really good for what it is, but anyways, we'll go ahead and play some Genshin Impact here. Oh, forgot to turn on my thing there, um, but yeah, anyways, here's the game. I mean, runs pretty much fun on the settings I have, so just to show you guys what I have right now, what settings I have. I tend to very, very moderate settings. Obviously, you can push these way up if you want to, but I have this at mix of high, medium, low settings, 60 FPS. Now, I can turn this to 120 FPS if I wanted to. Um, let's try it right now, actually. Uh, let's see here, so. Yeah, I mean, you can definitely tell the 120 FPS on here. Let's go ahead and just do some commissions, I guess, while we're here. Um, oh, yeah, you know, it's Genshin Impact. Uh, this is a, one of the more most intensive games on this thing. So, yeah, this, this phone does get really toasty. I will say that, especially on Genshin and Warzone Mobile. Oh, and you can see the lag spikes there. Yeah, this game, this, 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 um... This phone does get quite toasty, and it will definitely tank some of the frame rates if you have stuff on super high FPS. So, just kind of want to bring that up. Uh, this is, if you're going to be playing playing to play this for multiple hours, um, especially if you're going to be playing some of the AAA games that are coming out, I do suggest you either lower the settings or you uh, just, you know, play in burst because this, get, this uh, phone does struggle playing hours on end on these intensive games even like even if i'm not playing on the highest settings which is kind of crazy to think about so yeah i mean we'll just do the, the you know the local daily commissions here uh let's see what this is i mean get your impact is get your impact i don't need to explain more about it it's a gotcha game and that's kind of the, the biggest concerns i have for mobile gaming as a whole on this thing so yeah we'll get into that once again there but is your games running pretty much okay though like i said because of the heat management it does throttle and that FPS tanks. Now, obviously I am playing this at 120 FPS, so this is not something that you should be playing at, to be honest. 
Uh, let's see here. Oh. Let's see if I can get this uh, in one go. I don't think I can get this in one go. I don't think I can get this in one go. Yeah, no way. <laughs> oh, this is going to take forever, huh? Come on, can I make it? It's so tough. Uh, oh, I got it. It's crazy. Yeah, you can see that, that there were a bunch of frame spikes running at this game at 120, so yeah. Um, I guess that's enough for the showcase here. I guess I can go ahead and ex talk about my overall thoughts on gaming as a whole on this thing. So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so we showcased the couple of games here. Now, I will be showing a bunch of other games um, as footage as I'm recording this during uh, this section. So yeah, anyways, I want to kind of discuss. So there's some really good games in this on this device. Um, stuff like Transitor, I love this game. Uh, SpongeBob, you know, there's actual games that you can play that are not just like mobile games, quote unquote mobile games. There are actual like full featured indie uh, slash stuff that came out on console as well that have made it onto mobile and stuff like that and especially with Apple if they push AAA to the point where it gets successful on the iPhone I can see the entire mobile space completely transforming its game quality and really seeing those really good really high quality not like pay to win games come over like <laughs> could you imagine Elden Ring on mobile that'd be crazy so yeah I'm really hoping that Apple sticks to their guns and really pushes the AAA uh, space onto mobile, but there are a couple problems that I see right now with mobile. So let's get into it. First of all, touch controls. I think you've seen me play this. It's pretty tough to play with touch controls. Now, for games, for a bunch of these games, now they have, you know, they have actual like dedicated buttons for different actions and they have their own dedicated touchscreen layout, right? But there was footage of Resident Evil 8 that leaked out and based on it, it seems to be that the touchscreen layout is just basically an Xbox 360 controller as a touchpad. And from my experience, that is probably the worst uh, way that you can program a touchscreen layout. It doesn't feel good and it basically forces most players, in my opinion, to have to use something like a actual controller. So basically, they're going to have to spend extra money to buy a controller. And that's no bueno. People don't want to spend money, especially with how inflated the economy is. So yeah, I'm really hoping that once these games come out, they are optimized for touchscreen devices because obviously in the end, these are touchscreen devices. No one wants to bring a controller with them in their pocket to play a game. At the same time, no one who doesn't have one wants to spend money uh, just to play a game optimally. So yeah, that's number one. Number two is the pricing structure. It's been revealed that Resident Evil 8 will be 30 bucks, which I think is a completely fair deal. Resident Evil 8 is a great game, um, but it is a pricing structure that hasn't been really tested before on the mobile space, especially the mobile gaming space. A lot of the games that you see here, um, stuff like Genshin Impact, SpongeBob, um, they're either free to play gacha games like Genshin Impact, or they cost under 10 bucks. SpongeBob, Battle for Bikini Gun, Transitor, all costing under basically five bucks from when I purchased them. Minecraft was probably the most expensive game that I bought outright, and that was only like seven bucks. So to see a $30 game just boom on the App Store is going to basically, I can see that turning some heads away. Now, I will say this, Resident Evil 8 is offering the first couple of like hours of content for free. So it allows them to people to try out and the game before they buy it. But I'm just hoping that this pricing structure doesn't completely change because I think my, my concern is that if the $30 pricing structure doesn't go well, I can see them instead switching to like, oh, instead of that, let's pay, let's charge $5 per episode or like $5 per chapter. And that's a pricing structure that I don't want to see. I just want, you know, the full fledged experience, one time payment. That's it. Um, I'm hoping it doesn't devolve into that. And finally, I want to discuss the elephant in the room. This is probably the biggest concern I have for gaming on the iPhone. It's the competition. I mean, you got, especially with how big the PC handheld space has bloomed. So you got stuff like the Steam Deck and stuff. I'm struggling really to figure out where this belongs in the gaming space. Let's be honest here. Okay, I, I, wanna, I wanna sit down here. If I was, if someone wanted to play Resident Evil 8, right? 
I'm not going to recommend a $1,200 phone to play Resident Evil 8 on. I'm going to recommend them either to buy it on their console if they own one, or if not, just buy a $400 Steam Deck. I mean, where's my Steam Deck? I don't even have it right now, but I think I would rather them spend way less money to spend on a platform that is known to last and has matured for specifically AAA gaming rather than spending 1000 to 1200 bucks on an untested platform to play that game and that's kind of the biggest thing is that apple has yet to prove themselves that they mean business in the gaming industry and that's a big problem um, now it is nice that they are doing this kind of xbox play anywhere where if you purchase a game on the app store if it's available on mac or ipad you can play it on there but that implies that those people who bought it for gaming have those devices so apple is basically going to have to convince the more hardcore audience to play on the apple platform and that's going to be a problem if they don't really push it and show them there's a reason why they should do so then i can see this platform failing and that's my biggest concern is that sure we have all these AAA games here but what's the point if these are the only AAA games like maybe there's a huge push now but then a year later there's nothing and for someone who wants to splurge a thousand plus dollars on a phone just for gaming these AAA games, that's going to sting them right in the butt. Because if for $400 or even less, you can buy a Steam Deck that has thousands, tens of thousands of games from decades ago. And you can play them anytime, anywhere, basically, for the most part, without many, many major issues. And that's basically what Apple's competing at in this space. They need to show themselves that they're, hey, we're here, we mean it, and not just be there just for a little bit. It's like, hey, hey. They, they, basically, what I'm saying is that they can't do this as a tech demo. They need, if they want to really make this successful, gaming successful, um, AAA gaming successful, outside of the mobile gaming heart, uh, market, they're going to have to prove that they belong there and show that they mean it. So, yeah. Hopefully they can do that, but I'm not putting my hopes up. And something I should actually never mention was the heat problems on this thing. I mean, Genshin Impact really warms up this device and slows it down quite a bit after like an hour or two of gameplay. So if you're playing a game like Resident Evil, something that these AAA games that sometimes you can play for hours and hours on end, by the time you get like maybe like halfway through your gaming session, all of a sudden the game is going to tank in performance. So that's going to be a problem. So yeah, that's something I never thought about, but it is something that I completely forgot to mention and it's something that we should keep a note of. But anyways, beside the point, let's conclude. Overall, the 15 Pro Max is great for the games that it has right now, but Apple really needs to prove themselves that they have a space in the gaming industry because at the moment, most of the time, Mac gaming and Apple gaming is kind of seen as a joke for the more hardcore audience. So yeah, anyways. I think that's going to be it for the video. This video has been going on long enough. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Uh, this one has been rambling. I've been basically rambling for so long now that I kind of lost track of thought. I'm running into so many issues with screen recording. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Um, yeah, I hopefully you guys enjoyed. I said hopefully you guys enjoyed so many times. But anyways, if you did, make sure to leave a like. I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.